I guess it's working. Cup of tea. Customary for Workshop Wednesdays to start. Workshop Wednesdays, what you gonna do about it? Workshop Wednesdays, haven't got a clue about it. Workshop Wednesdays, what you gonna do about it? This. <laughs> well, that was smooth, wasn't it, folks? Another fantastic introduction. <laughs> a completely wonky. So yeah, I tried to play the Workshop Wednesday thing and it played the start from the video from the week before, but hey, here we are. Wonky Wednesday. Welcome folks. Thanks for uh, tuning in. We've got Australia, Denver. Global, we've gone global. Yeah, I've got to tell you folks, um, whatever you've done is working because um, YouTube decided it likes me and started recommending me on people's uh, feeds. People are clicking on it, so that's all good. Um, yeah, it's kind of exploding a bit on YouTube. So I, I, I've brushed my hair. <laughs> Special occasion. So this is part two of the guitar build that I started, um, I guess COVID-19 kicked us into gear um, to keep our lockdown YouTubers entertained at home, I decided to build a guitar completely from scratch, live on YouTube. What a fantastic idea. Whose idea was it, Carol? <laughs> so Carol's over there with her hand up. Carol's over there operating the, um, the, the cameras. We've got a um, multi-camera set up. So uh, at the moment, we're, we're just using two cameras for the live stream. Um, I wanted to point out that today I'm going to be building a guitar, or at least um, I'm making the neck part of the guitar. Um, I'm going to be doing it as fast as I can because we've only got the afternoon, or hopefully less than two hours. I'm going to do it in less than two hours. Start your um, stopwatches now, folks. Um, so this isn't going to be like a full depth how to build a guitar. I can't go into every detail and turn you into a guitar maker in just a couple of hours. Um, but I do have this whole process filmed in long form, um, a proper build your own guitar online course. I've got it for both electric guitars and acoustic guitars. We start with the design section, start with a blank piece of paper, you design your guitar and then build it completely from scratch. Um, it's probably not as hard as you think. That's what I'm here for, is just to show you that it's probably not as hard as you think. So um, I know a lot of you there already, you already build at home. <laughs> a lot of my, my viewers already kind of like know me and uh, they're already building. They've, they've either come on my workshop course or they're on my online course already building. Um, if you're not, then welcome. And hopefully I can convince you that it is possible to build your own guitar completely from scratch, even if you're a complete beginner and you've never done it before. I've been told it can't be done, um, but you know, I've taught 400 people how to do it face to face, and I've got hundreds more online students who are also building. Um, you know, head over to the website guitarmaking.co.uk um, and you'll, you'll see on the forums the people building and um, photographs of what they're turning out um, using my methods. We filmed the whole process and I cut out all the rubbish like this, what I'm doing now. All this rubbish has been cut out. So it just focuses purely on building just the information that you need. And I've gone in depth. So I've shown you not just one way to do it, sometimes two or three ways to do it, depending on what tools you've got. So tools is obviously something. Um, if you're new to the channel, tools, you're gonna need tools to build guitars. Uh, I have made a video called Essential Tools and you can find that on the channel. Everything that you need to build a guitar. Basically it boils down to don't buy a whole set of stuff, 
just buy the one that you need. Don't buy a whole set of chisels, just buy one chisel. I boiled it down to a very small toolkit where you can build, you could build as many guitars as you like with this kit. Um, so check out that video, but um, wait until after this live stream, hey. Carol, you got your hand up. Carol's going to interrupt me from time to time. She likes to heckle me. This, and that, that, that uh, people are like, set, ne set neck or bolt on? Set neck or bolt on? Yeah, set neck or bolt on. So oh. we let YouTube decide, didn't we? That was a great idea, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm full of great ideas. So YouTube decided. Egypt, we've got Ehab. Hey, Ehab from, well, well Egypt moved to Italy. So but Roger Appleby, probably in Boo. Italy, but you might as well good to see you, Ehab. Say some hellos. We've got Boo, you've got Roger Appleby, Tony Potter, Tony Potter in Australia. Hello, Fiona, Team Team Aquila, Team Bailey, Team Bailey, Team Bailey's Matt, at home on lockdown Matt watching Tomans it. In oh yeah, share it, folks. By the way, if you're watching it, hit the share button or something, whatever it is you do. We've got Jonathan. Auckland. Share it on Facebook. YouTube loves that. Facebook don't like it though. Jonathan Auckland. Um, there's other people that have checked in early. Oh, I'm um, back. Uh, Darren, Bag Press. Yeah. Hi, everybody. They're all just desperate for you to tell them the score. Set neck or what's it? So, but you carry on with your. Right. So we had a poll. I decided it would be a good idea to let YouTube decide. Was we going to make a like a Fender style? Um, Fender style bolt on, or a set neck, like a PRS or a Les Paul. YouTube decided to go for a set neck. So I'm putting this piece of wood away. This is my um, bolt on neck blank that I was going to use. So it did go right down to the bone. I don't know if ever you got, I don't know if any of you guys saw my little joke. Neck and neck. It was almost neck and neck at one point. <laughs> that's funny, isn't it? Yeah, that's why you cut all this out. <laughs> Yeah, this is all, none of this is, in, no jokes on the course. Zero jokes. One joke. Okay, there's one joke on the course. Don't tell him it. I'm not going to tell him it, no. So this is my absolutely fantastic, spectacular piece of mahogany. Notice the quarter sawn grain. Vertical grain, almost vertical grain. Anything up to 30 degrees is allowed. It's called quarter sawn. So this is a really fantastic piece of mahogany. I chose it, especially for you guys. Haven't decided what we're gonna do with this guitar yet. Ideas in the comments, please. Let's have a listen. Mmm. Yep. Sounds like a bit of wood. <laughs> So if you had lots of bits of wood, you could tap them all and see which is the most resonant, which one sounds the loudest or which one rings for the longest. Um, if it sounds good as a piece of wood, it's going to sound good as a guitar. I've selected this one. It's a beauty. So whoever ends up with this guitar is going to be lucky. I'm going to give you a quick recap over what we did on the last live stream now, because my fretboard is already pre-made, as you can see. So these fretboards are available on our website. Have we mentioned the website yet? I don't know. Um, this is uh, with the nut slot. So if you're not sure, if you want to order a fretboard, order it with the nut slot, because you can always cut that off anyway. And um, this is 24 frets, so I'm going to cut the end off. So um, yeah, I decided it's going to be 22 frets. I took that decision out of your hands because um, I've only got a standard length truss rod. So this is a 440mm truss rod. That's what we're going to use. Um, it suits having a 22 fret, so it's going to be a 22 fret guitar. So in a minute I'm just going to chop the ends off this fretboard. This fretboard, I, I actually made the whole thing on the last live stream, from start to finish, from an ebony blank. So if you're interested in how we did that, check out the last live stream, or I've also got another video, how we make fretboards. And there's another one, how to do it the hard way as well. So several different ways to make fretboards on the channel if you search. But 
to cut a long story short, I've already got my fretboard. I'm going to use this to mark out my neck and then we're going to go ahead and make a neck. By the end of today, folks, we're going to have something resembling a neck. That means I'm going to have my fretboard glued on. Touch wood. What's up, Carol? You just need to tell, you go back to telling them what, what we're going to do over the next and how you're going to ask, take questions. Yep, yeah, sure. Right. So, fretboard's already made. I'm going to use this. Um, so, it's going to be like action packed, folks. It's going to be router mayhem, bandsaw mayhem. There's going to be sawdust flying everywhere very shortly in about five minutes right so i'm not going to be able to stop and answer every question as you ask it in the comments what i'm going to do is i'm going to do each job from start to finish and then we're going to pause in between each job for a quick question and answer um, and then i'm going to move on to the next job there is going to come a point later on where i get my um i get i'm going to have to glue my truss rod in um, that is I glue a fillet on top of the truss rod to hold the truss rod in then I have to let that dry before I can glue the fretboard on now if I'm going to achieve my target today then I need to get my fretboard glued on so um, I've got to leave that truss rod fillet to dry for about 10, 15, 20 minutes so there's going to come, come a point later on where there's going to be like a, a pause in the action then I'm going to do more of a full-on question and answer 15 minutes maybe or 20 minutes um, until I think the glue's dry enough for me to carry on and then I'm going to carry on and, and glue the fretboard on and that'll be me done for today so truss rod slot headstock angle I'm going to cut the neck out which is a two-stage process um, band saw and then routing I'm going to thickness the headstock um, cut the tuner holes and then we're going to glue the truss rod in and we're going to glue the fretboard in so that's what about seven jobs I can't count anymore is it Wednesday to it's workshop Wednesday workshop Wednesday yes yeah, so that's the other thing big announcement I was going to do this at the start and I forgot big announcement we're going to do Saturday and Sunday as well because um because we left it till the end of it. Yeah, it looks like lockdown's <laughs> coming to an end. So as usual, we've left it way too late. <laughs> so um, what I'm worried is the entire population of the UK will be uh, on ventilators by next week. So uh, I'm going to do Saturday and Sunday, which means that by Sunday night, well, um, it'll probably be 1 p.m. Saturday, Sunday. 1 p.m. Saturday, 1 p.m. Sunday. I'm just going to keep working until I've finished the goddamn thing and then uh, see if it'll work. <laughs> we might see if we can bash a tune out of it. There'll be no bursting into song today and no more f jokes, no more enjoying myself. Yeah, I've got to say, I am enjoying these live streams, folks, so thanks for watching and uh, keep sharing it. And hopefully YouTube will bump us up a bit more and uh, keep us going. We do need your support. Um, we do play live gigs as well. They've all dried up and we can't run any workshop courses at all. So pretty pretty much most of my work has dried up. Um, thanks to guys, anyone who supports us. All the links are down below. So just head down there and see what you can do. All right. Cheers, folks. Well, With that. Lock, lockdown Wednesday, what you're going to do about it? And, uh, Jonathan Ockman says he's not leaving his shed. <laughs> he's not leaving his shed. He's not leaving his shed until I finish this guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Fair play to you. Right. Don't blame you. So can you just right, so Carol's going to be switching cameras so and following the action as fast as possible. Which means I might not be able to respond. On so she won't be able to respond instantly to the comments, but keep them coming. Um, don't you can ask as many questions as you want. But we'll we'll get to that in between each job, all right folks. So Carol's gonna count me in. I'm ready, Carol. I'm ready. Right. We're gonna do it.
to. You need to get nearer the camera so that you can operate the camera and follow me because we don't want any more of this thing. We need some more of this thing down here. So Carol's going to follow the action, not my ugly mug. Right. Are you ready? I'm ready, yeah. Three, two, one. Go! Start the clocks, folks. Again. Restart the clock. <laughs> There's no rush, is there? So here's my piece of mahogany. Here's my fretboard. And here's my truss rod. I've also prepared a, a piece of mahogany for a fillet. Um, if you don't know what any of these words mean, it don't matter. It will all become clear. Or if not, you can head over to the, the website and find out. So, it's... Um, if I cut all the shape of the neck out now and then tried to make the truss rod slot, it would be really difficult. So we're going to start with a truss rod slot. It's easy to make a slot in a nice square piece of wood. So this piece of wood has been checked. I've checked that it's flat on three sides, which means top, bottom and one edge. We need one edge flat because I'm going to use it as a guide for the router. Carol, the camera's moved. What are you doing that for? Can I have it down on my bench, please? They don't need to see my face. I've seen loads of channels where you don't even see the guy's face. So no face, please. Not face. Get on with it. I was doing all right until you. Always make sure you've got your pencil ready. <laughs> no, where are you coming? I'm looking for my pencil. I can't believe you did that. Yeah, it was done. Somebody's had it. Somebody. Here it is. This little one. No, it's got no thing on it. Oh, no. I'm going to show you. <laughs> Here it is, look. Um. There all the time. I've got two. I've got two ready, just in case, look. Hope you're enjoying this, folks. <laughs> right. Piece of wood, pencil, ruler. I did think about going through all the tools that I'm going to use before I start, but I thought that'd be boring. So I want you to just keep an eye out, folks, and I want you to take note just how few tools that I'm actually using. Can you zoom in a bit, please, Carol? I'm going to put my ruler here right hang on calm down I need to see what you're looking at right here's my fretboard the reason I like to make my fretboard first is because it's it's really handy to mark out the neck so I'm going to mark out the neck um, Leaving enough space for a headstock. Oh, should we have the headstock vote before we start? We're going to have a vote in a bit soon about the headstocks. Bailey or Gibson? Leave enough space for your headstock. And I'm going to mark my nut position. And I'm going to mark my last fret. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 frets. And then... The 23rd fret becomes the end of the fretboard. So I'm going to cut my fretboard there. And I'm also going to cut this bit off here because I don't need that. Carol. Right, I'm going to cut the ends of my fretboard off. I'll do that in a minute. So here's my neck. I'm going to square those marks across. That's my nut takeoff point. I'm going to leave 4.5 mil for the nut. Here's the end of the fretboard. And now I'm going to mark the center. I don't need to mark a whole center line. I'm just going to mark it here where the nut is. Um, just using a nice round number in the middle and then looking at the edges. Very quick method of finding the centre. 
Can you zoom in, Carol, so they can see it? Center. So here's my router. This should be set up. So it auto switches is turning on the Hoover as an extractor. It's really handy to have the Hoover sucking the dust away as we cut this slot. This is what I'm doing. I'm making this slot for the truss rod it needs to be a bit wider at one end apart from that it's just a very simple straight slot here's my truss rod so if I put that on I can mark the end of the truss rod I'm lining it up there between the two lines of the nut it doesn't have to be exact anywhere there will do that's where the truss rod will be I can mark the end now this end, I'm going to leave an extra bit. I just use, it's about 18 or 20 mil. I just use the length of the nut there to mark it. So the truss rod sits there, but the slot needs to be a bit longer so that you can get an Allen key in to adjust. Let me show you that. So that would sit there and you can get an Allen key in. So the slot's longer than the slot, so you can get the, the slot is longer than the truss rod, so that you can get an Allen key in there like that. Health and safety. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp a block at each end. This is going to be what, what I call a bump stop. So I'm going to put a clamp at each end and it's going to bump the router to stop so it can't go through the line at both ends. If I line the router up and then the block goes there and a clamp, a bump stop there. Same at this end. So now I can adjust my router until it's level with the centre line. So if I move that maybe you can see I've got a mark on my router here which I can line up with the centre line there. doesn't have to be exact because if I don't get it exact I'll just move the center line to match Right, health and safety then folks, before I turn on a machine, if you're, um, if you're under 16 or something you shouldn't be doing this on your own, get some help from, uh, from an adult or um, someone who knows what they're doing. Um, if, if you've not used any of these machines before, there's loads of courses you can do, um, for instance on this website you might find one or two courses where I go through all the health and safety stuff. Um, I do my best at what I can do in a small amount of time, but um, most importantly, count your fingers before and after using any power tool. Mask up. This is my mask. It's been going since um, 
start of the outbreak. It's probably completely useless by now, but it makes me feel a bit better. Um, gave all my other masks to a health worker who didn't have any, um, who was in, working on a COVID-19 ward. Um, so I'm now supplying the NHS with masks. But you don't go out, so it's fine. <laughs> um, comes to something, doesn't it, when guitar makers got more PPE than hospitals. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I'm making this one last. Mask up. I'm going to go... This truss rod is 9mm, so I'm going to go about 10mm deep, 10 to 11mm deep. And then what I do is I glue a piece of wood down on top, so the piece of wood will end up being about a millimetre thick. So I want to go about 10 to 11mm. Now every route is different, but they've all got a depth, some kind of depth stop. This is mine. I'm going to dial in a depth of 11 mil, 10 and a half, 10 and a half mil, 10 to 11 mil is fine. Um, so when this stop here touches that stop there, it can't go any deeper. I don't know if you can see that. It won't let me go any deeper than that. But that's way too much to do in one pass, so I'm going to split it into four or five passes. So here we go. After this, I'm going to change the cutter and uh, tidy up that end bit. So a quick slot, I'm going to put my health and safety gear on and cut this slot. So this is our first uh, potential for things to go completely crazy. I can see my face again for some reason, but... It's all right. We so, this is um, this is the first time where things could go mental. Anything could happen, really, when you turn on a power tool. So, um, Carol, are you dancing? What are you doing? Carol's jumping up and down like this, going. <laughs> Carol, I'm putting my mask on. I'm putting it on. I'm talking about stuff. Lordy law, it's quite off-putting. So as I was saying, it's live. So, Carol, it's live. So anything could happen. The postman might turn up in the middle of it or something. I don't know. So I'm going to do my best, but I might drop the router. Or Carol might start dancing or, and put me off or something. Anything could happen. I'm going to do my best. Carol, I'm putting my mask on. And then we're going to go for it, all right? You'll need to film down here now. Yeah, if you've got long hair, make sure you tie it back. That's what Carol's trying to say. Carol, they can hear you whispering. <laughs> so they should. Just, if you've got something to say, just say it. Tie your hair back! We never get this bloody thing done at this rate.
Do you get the overhead cam in there, Carol? Did you get an overhead shot? So I'm just going to change the cutter to a wider cutter. Just a random half an inch cutter that was. Any cutter would do as long as it's bigger than the other one. I have to reset the depth because I've reset the cutter. Same depth or a tiny tiny bit deeper but I only need to go for the width of the I only need to go for the length of the nut here it only needs to be this long so I can now move this block to here and repeat. Again I'm going to do it in three or four cuts. Always wait till the cutter stops spinning before you wave it about. There we go. There's the truss rod slot. A wee bit of break out there, I didn't see that happen. Doesn't matter though. No one will ever see that. What's break out not? See where it's torn out a little bit of the wood. I had a question on the forum actually um, earlier yesterday or today about um, break out. If you do your routing in the wrong order, um, especially where two two routes intersect, like a neck pocket and a humbucker pocket, if you do them in the wrong order, it can cause breakout, which is where the router just grabs hold of the grain, takes a chunk out. In this case, it doesn't matter because it's all hidden by the fretboard. Nobody will ever see that unless you tell them. He has asking what's the diameters of the cutters. So that was a quarter inch cutter or a six mil cutter to fit the six mil truss rod. These are our new truss rods which are six mil or a quarter of an inch. Um, they just stopped making the old one which used to fit into a um, 11 mil slot. Actually these are probably, they take up less space in the guitar so leaves more wood which is going to make it stronger if you ask me. So great, a great truss rod. This one's two-way, but it doesn't need to be two-way. You could just use a, uh, a one-way truss rod just as well. Because if you think about it, the neck is going to be bending this way when you put the strings on. The neck bends this way. So the truss rod is to pull it back. So you should only really need the one-way truss rod. It's nice to have a two-way one for a bit of extra um, security, but you don't really need it. Truss rod slot done. Next, headstock angle. It's going to get messy. So here's the first of my jigs that we're going to use. This is a headstock angle jig. As you can see, I've cut the headstock angle in. Everybody, everybody gets hung up about the exact number of what is the headstock angle. To be honest, it's worked out over the years. I've worked it out over the years of what you can get out of your average neck blank when it comes. If you wanted an extreme headstock angle but your piece of wood isn't thick enough, what are you going to do? You'll end up with a join. So to keep it as a one piece neck, there's a maximum you can get out of your average neck, neck block. Um, there is an optimum headstock angle which is between 9 and 12 degrees. Um, that's about as much as I'll say. There's a lot more on the course about that kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to use my jig here to just mark a line. Don't know if you can see that. 
Working fast, folks. You've got to be quick to keep up. So that's my um, headstock angle. I'm now just going to cut that on the bantle like this. General rule with the bandsaw is you always leave the line on the piece of wood that you want to keep. So you always leave the line on the workpiece. So there's my line. This is the piece that I want to keep. So I'm going to cut this piece off. There's a free um, wedge for your studio. Wedge for your studio door there. So this goes back in the jig. Oh, my crank. Now I've got another outer here. Um, obviously at home you're not likely to have hundreds of routers like me. Just means you have to change the cutter more often. Okay, so the I made a base plate for this as well. Patterns for all this are on the course. Um, it rides on these fences here on these rails, and it's going to cut and leave a perfectly smooth surface, almost perfectly smooth surface on this headstock. So cutting the headstock angle is a two-stage process. Most of the cutting out jobs are actually a two-stage process. So we do a rough cut first on the bandsaw. As you can see, I've left my line on. And it's pretty rough. Now I'm going to use the router to do a, a, a final cut. So a lot of these jobs you'll see, it's actually a two-stage process. A rough cut and then a final cut. Same as when we profiled the fretboard if you were there. Okay, this is a two inch neck blank or a 50 mil neck blank. So it's, um, it's, it's 50 mil by about 100 mil, but it doesn't have to be that big. It depends on the size of your, your guitar. So you would do a drawing first, um, and then obviously you've, you can measure your drawing to see how big your neck needs to be. If you've got any specific requirements on the length or thickness of your neck, then you can ask on the site, you can order these um, bits of wood from the website and if you've got particular dimensions you can add them as a note in the checkout or email us and we'll see what we can sort out. What's, so I'm going to... What's four inches in now? You know, what's the width across? 100mm. Right. But they're usually about 80 to 90. This one's a bit wider than normal. So I'm just going to set the cutter so it just leaves those two lines on that I drew for the nut. Definitely mask up for this one.
headstock angle folks and look how accurate that is considering what I'm working with no CNC machines just a router and some scrap wood this is all made from scrap wood look at that it's almost perfect let's hope the rest of the afternoon goes as well as that <laughs> So headstock angle, now I'm going to continue cutting out the neck. So one thing I like to point out about guitar making is when you start a guitar, everything seems to happen really fast. Um, everything seems to happen really fast when you're just starting a guitar. Like, I mean, it's dead easy to cut out the shape. In fact, I get a lot of people turn up at my workshop and they say, oh, I'm making a guitar. It turns out all they've done is got a piece of wood and cut the shape out that's the easiest bit it's all the other stuff that you've got to do um, having said all that cutting the shape out it is one of the most exciting bits isn't it so let's do it again it's a two-stage process um, I'm gonna I've got to mark it out first and then cutting it out is two-stage process so I'm gonna bandsaw it and then route it so um, Stick around, let's mark it out. I'm gonna mark the um, side profile. So headstock thickness is gonna be 16 mil. I'm gonna mark down 16 mil from the top of the headstock. Yeah, 16 mil. Take my word for it, folks. See on the course, we've got all super close-ups of this kind of thing where you can see all the ruler measurements and all that. But as this is live, Carol's doing her best over there. So 16, 16. Here I'm gonna measure 16 to 18. Um, I want it roughly about the 12th fret, somewhere around the here. It's gonna be about 18 mil. So there's a two mil taper it gets thicker right I actually need to know roughly where the neck joins the body so I'm going to use this just as a random shape it's one of my guitars um, yes so I'm going to mark where it would join the body right so on this guitar you really want your last fret to be level with the bottom of that horn there so on this guitar it joins about there this is where it joins the body I'm going to transfer that now onto the neck so this fret is where it joins the body okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna come an inch this way and this is where I draw the heel so where it joins the body, the neck is going to stick out about an inch, three quarters of an inch to an inch. And then I'm going to join those lines up. So I need a longer ruler for that. So you're going to need at least two rulers, I reckon, a short one and a long one. You don't need any fancy straight edges, although they will help. So this is going to be removed. It's a bit reflecty, isn't it? Is that alright? There we go. Beautiful. So that's the side profile. Now I'm going to mark out the top profile. I need a centre line. So I can actually mark the centre line from where the truss rod slot came out. Happens to be 49 mil from the edge. So I can mark that, mark in the centre. Wherever your truss rod slot came out, you can mark the centre. It'll be the same at both ends.
So there's my centre line, hastily drawn on. Not my proudest moment, I've got to say, but it'll do. So we can also draw a centre line on the fretboard. Super accurate. I'm going to do this as accurate as I can. So we're marking out the neck, ready for cutting it out. And I'm going to use my fretboard to mark on the taper of the neck, just like this. So we can line that up with the centre lines, draw that on. I think I'll extend these lines to the end of the piece of wood. For building purposes I'm going to leave this end extra long because it's good for putting a clamp on. I'm not going to cut the neck to length yet. It's handy to have a slightly extra long piece. And then headstock folks, what are we going to do? Well, I can tell you that so far, only EP said Gibson. Everybody else said Bailey. Gibson or Bailey, last chance. Is it loads of Baileys, yeah? Yeah! Bailey! <laughs> Bailey all the way. Well, it's so far. Right, we're going for this headstock then. Right. Tell you why I particularly like this headstock. I've chosen this headstock for the Bandsman build. The basic um, build on the website, on the course, is because it's 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 a nice easy shape to make it's all nice nice curves problem with this one is that bit there making that bit there by hand you really have to do that bit by hand with a file or a, something no bailey 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 all the way bailey bailey bailey, bailey. and he had rock and roll folks Ehab in Egypt said everybody said bailey cheers folks <laughs> so we're going to do this one this is what i'd recommend you were going to do if you were doing it at home nice easy shape and very attractive too and just to remind you though that with that choice of headstock you need to have small buttoned tunes yeah you want to check whatever you, you would do this on your drawing this is all covered in the design section is um you you you, you could order your tuners in advance and actually test them on your drawing before you even get this far so i'm going to use this to mark out the bailey headstock shape what? By popular demand, as chosen by YouTube. TV one says the Gibsons ones break off too easily. So. Yes. But you couldn't possibly comment. There we go. Couldn't possibly comment on the quality of other people's guitars. But there's um, there's my neck, marked out, and ready for cutting out. So obviously it's a bit of an awkward shape. Whichever way you cut out is going to be awkward. So you can cut the front out first, it makes the side awkward. You cut the side out first, it makes the front awkward. I always cut the side out first. Um, so here we go. Over to the bandsaw. You need to do that like me, please. He thinks he's been slightly outrated. Sorry, EP. <laughs> no offence taken. <laughs> right, so I'm going to do two cuts in and out here, and then another coat, another cut all the way to join up with it. So two cuts Hands, remember. to cut out the back of the neck.
something like that. Can you just have your, your hands really close because the perspective of the... Okay, Carol's pointing out my hands looked close, but what I can tell you is I was keeping my hands as far away as you possibly can from that blade. Um, the main thing about the bandsaw is if you start going wonky, you might have seen me go wonky a few times. What I do is I just pull it back and carry on. And the idea is it only has to be very roughly cut out because we're now going to route the profile. So this is the third kind of routing you'll have seen today. I've already shown you routing a slot. That's what I'd call pocket routing, routing a hole. I showed you surface routing, which was routing the headstock. That's surface routing. Now I'm going to show you profiling, which is copying a shape. So there's two ways to do it. I, I showed you it last time when we did the fretboard. When we made the fretboard, we stuck the fretboard on top of the pattern. Like this. And we copied it with the bottom bearing cutter. Now we're going to stick the pattern on top of the piece of wood. And we're going to go with the top bearing cutter. So that's a, that's a top bearing cutter. The cutter will follow the pattern, copy the shape into this piece of wood. So a few things I need to do just to stick this onto there. I'll try and explain as I go. So I'm going to wipe off all the dust because I'm going to use double sided tape to put my pattern on and dust is the enemy of double sided tape. I'll just use one long piece this time. You could use smaller pieces if you were trying to be um, frugal, but I'm trying to be quick. Cut off the excess. Okay, so I can leave that to one side now. If I just peel up the corner. So it's ready to go then I can uh, just fold that down leave it to one side until I'm ready to use it um, what I'd like to do is sorry Carol's got a question um, see overhead shots if you need to move the whole piece off yeah okay the and then I can do good over I'm going to move over this way a bit. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Lovely jubbly. Fantastic. Thank you. I'm just grabbing a lump of wood here to use as a work board. So this is just so that I don't uh, damage my bench too much. Let's see if I can line it up. Brilliant. You could skip this step, but I'm just doing it for a bit of extra safety. Um, you could just stick your neck down to your bench, but I'm going to use this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole through my neck. So this is the end of my fretboard. And then there's going to be a pickup here. So right in the middle of there, I'm going to make a 10 mil hole all the way through and we're going to pin this neck down to the workboard. So over to the drill, 10 mil hole just there. Oh, here it comes. What am I moving? That's all good. See if, uh, all good. See if I've got any more light. Any good? Great. Right, so uh, I'll just punch this. It doesn't have to be exact. It's a 10 mil drill. That'll be the same drill I drill the tuna holes with in a minute.
after he did it. So this hole has nothing to do with the guitar. It's purely a jigging hole. So I'm going to tap this pin in about halfway and then that goes into a hole on the workboard there and that will, believe it or not, that will hold the neck at one end. Um, so now I'm going to stick this on. We've already drawn the fretboard on so I can just line this up in between the lines that I've drawn already. And if I'm making the same guitar over and over again as you can see I've drilled a hole so I could I could have a I'd use that as a as a hole to line up with that hole and then everyone would be the same if you see what I mean. But a lot of my guitars are made particular to a spec so I make them one at a time I don't always use these methods there are a lot of other methods the methods I'm showing you this is just one way to do it there are as many ways to build guitars as there are guitar makers so um, hopefully this will just inspire you to have a go show you that it is actually pretty doable so we give it a squeeze it's this double-sided tape is activated by pressure so the harder you squeeze the harder it sticks I'm just going to give it a squeeze in my vice here just to be sure just, just to be on the safe side with a bit of oil on that, eh? Any comments? Oh, somebody, um, Tony Potter asked what make was the bandsaw? Uh, this is my old one, which is a record power. No, it's not, it's a Rexon. Rexon? Rexon profile, profile line, BS10SA. It's a great bandsaw, but I think it's discontinued. So that pattern is solid on there. That's not moving. It's fixed on solid with double sided tape. This is NEC tape or exhibition tape by the way, not ordinary double sided tape. So that can go back to the location pin, back in the hole and then to hold it firmly at the other end I'm going to use a clamp. So I've got one of my clamps and I've cut the end down like that. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay. I've cut the end down like that. Ooh. Just so it fits under there like that. Oh yeah, and we put a wedge. I'm going to cut a bit off the wedge just to go underneath the headstock. bit of wedge just to go under there and that's sufficient that's all we need I wish I'd put the other cutter in that router now it's okay I can change it I'm gonna change this cutter Here's my uh, top bearing router cutter. This is the standard one. It's half an inch by half an inch. That's going in. And I'll have to put the longer cutter in to finish off, as you'll see. So 
So a couple of stages to this. The advantage of this though is it it just leaves such a nice smooth finish and it's very accurate. So I need to start and stop in between my nut lines which you can't see I'll draw them on there so you can see. Hopefully you can see that. So I'm not going around the headstock I'm just doing the two sides of the neck here. Can you zoom out a little bit Carl? It's a bit blurry. Yeah, just it's focused on the background. On there we go. So I'm going to start and stop. Take the depth stop off. What I always do here is I take it down to full depth. I'll do it on this side so you can maybe see or maybe not. I take it down to full depth and then decide how many cuts to split that into. So it's taking off a good old chunk. I'm going to split it into two cuts should be able to do it in two. clamp on there to stop the board moving. I'll just check that because it did move. It was just the board that moved though. Here we go. Back down the other side. So now to go deeper, I can just remove the pattern and continue. I'm going to move this clamp just onto the end now, just to hold it. And repeat. Let's check. Um, maximum depth, again I'm going to split that into two passes. because it's, it's not letting me get right to the end. So that's the side of the neck done, but there's just this bit of the heel where it didn't get all the way down to depth. I'm going to put a longer cutter in now and repeat. See how easy it is? It's not difficult, is it? Rubbing one thing against another thing. Like I said in the last live stream, I say this a lot. I say if you can draw a straight line with a ruler and a pencil, then you can probably make a guitar. 
Jim McMillan's asking you about the template. Should we do that afterwards? Yeah, let me finish this first. Fine, and now I'm going to turn it over. You can see there's just that last little bit left. So I just need to trim that bit off. I'm not worried about this bit at the end. Because uh, my, my leg's going to finish about here. That bit's going to be chopped off later. Easiest way to get the pin out. Use a chuck key. Just hold this bit. Hit it like this. Pin out. So I'm just going to trim off that last little bit. So this this bit effectively becomes the pattern now, and trims off that bit using the bottom bearing router cutter. So we turn it over, clamp it down. Got another router with the bottom bearing cutter in it. So there's your top bearing, and there's your bottom bearing. You can see the, obviously the difference. So this, these two cutters, folks, this is the secret really of guitar making. There's a few other bits and bobs you need to know, but with these two things and a router and a bandsaw, you can make anything. It doesn't have to be a guitar. It could be anything. Look how easy it is. I'll make sure I don't unplug the wrong thing here. Okay, so I'm just going to set this so that the bearing guides against the neck and then the cutter will cut off the excess. Dead easy. That is my neck cut out. I don't know if you if that's coming across on the on the camera, but you can see that how accurate it is, and it's repeatable. So the question was about the template, Carol. What was the question? Right. So Jim McMillan was asking about that rubbish bit. Of wood. How did you? How did that get like that? How did he? How did you? Well, there's a there's a um, there's a whole section on the course which shows you how to make all the patterns but but this one is the dimensions come from the um, come from your drawing so you'll have to do a drawing you decide on the width of your nut and you and you choose a bridge and that's where the widths come from there's no point deciding to have a really narrow neck and then choosing a wide bridge so I love those slow things you do Carl okay. it's super slow and um Stop it. Stop it. Right. And um, an EP um, is asking, do you know why the chip of wood came off when you cut the truss rod slot? Is it just one of those things you have to live with, or is there a way of avoiding it from happening? Yes, there's a way of avoiding it from happening. And I, I could have taken smaller cuts. I probably should have, but I was rushing. Because I was rushing. EP was asking about the, what did you call it, breakout? 
yes break out so it's, it's caused by um, if you imagine the structure of wood imagine lots of like that's the end grain there that's lots of little holes imagine lots of straws like going all the way through sometimes the router it can grab on the straws and it can lift them you see what I mean it's like fibers so it's just it's, it's split along the grain it's how it's nothing that's nothing between friends right next job I'm going to thickness the headstock because I need to drill the tuna holes and if I try and drill them now this is not flat so I won't have a good surface to, to drill the tuna holes so I'm going to drill the tuna, ho uh, tuna holes after I've thickness the headstock so we're going to take the headstock down to the exact thickness that I need now if it's over 16 mil you won't get your tuners on most tuners won't fit so I'm going to aim for about 15 and a half mil and then after sanding it'll probably come out about 15 mil and that'd be ideal so you can actually go down to probably about I wouldn't go any less than 13 mil any thinner than that you might want to glue a veneer on to build it up a bit okay thickness in the headstock I've got another jig for that another jig another jig headstock thickness jig this is super highly technical as you can see that is a piece of old loft floorboard in and there's two lumps of scrap wood the dimensions of this don't matter as long as the two are the same height so any old scrap bit of wood will do um, I've glued on a couple of blocks on this one I've got a 14 mil block and a 16 mil block so I can set the thickness of the headstock off these blocks that's handy isn't it time saving device I'm going to set this up then as I was saying dust is your enemy with double sided tape so I'm going to give it a good clean and we're going to double sided tape this headstock down to the pattern here I use two pieces of double sided tape Don't start me off about the masking tape trick, folks. Don't do it. Get the proper stuff. What are you, cheapskate? So I'm going to chop the excess. Keep it neat. And I'm going to give it a good old squeeze with a clamp because I want to make sure it doesn't come loose halfway through this job otherwise we're in big trouble so I'll give it a good clamp and then I'm not even going to rely on that I'm going to use another block of wood under there as a wedge and put on another clamp just there this side of the wedge and then it can't pivot it should stay stuck down now so um, I'm gonna set this so it leaves 16 mil So I just touch it there and then I can measure it. It's what I call a little nick test. You'll have to take my word for it that that is just a tad, tad under 16 mil. So I've got the depth set. It's already set actually from obviously from the last guy. 
but uh, I'll do it in two cuts. We don't want to take off more than a two millimeters with this. drifting away then notice I've, I've only gone in between the two points of that oh before we take it off I'll just check it yeah so it's just under 16 mil thick And you can see I've only just gone between the two points of the headstock. Um, if we go much further than that, then you end up going into your neck. You don't want to do that. So this bit will be carved down later. Um, tune in on Saturday for that, folks. On Saturday, I'll be carving the neck. That'll be exciting, won't it? So right now, I'm just going to um, drill the tuner holes. So I'm going to use my pattern again. I'm going to stick that on with double sided tape and use it as a drilling guide. You could um, you could just use a hand drill for this and do it on your bench but I'm going to use my drill press um, it's just a bit easier You having fun trying to follow me, Carol? <laughs> yeah, I always get in trouble when I'm filming because I move too fast. Oh, look, I've done it upside down. That's what you do if you want to make a left handed one. Spot the deliberate mistake, folks. <laughs> I'll just try that again. Yeah, that was the clue, wasn't it? That was the clue. Yeah, if you want, that's the beauty of these patterns is if you want to make a left-handed guitar, you just turn the pattern over. <laughs> that's why we don't charge any extra for left-handed guitars. Whereas most factories would have to stop the machines. So I'm going to give it a bit of a squeeze. In my voice. Yeah, we're saving up for extra cameras, folks. <laughs> Click the link, support us down there. Support us, and then we can buy an extra camera and we can get in really close. And eat. <laughs> yeah, and Carol needs to eat. <laughs> So I've stuck my pattern on, check that it's pretty solid. I might give it another squeeze. We don't want it to come off halfway through, do we? No. And now I can use that as a drilling guide. What I'll actually do just to be on the safe side, I'll drill one, then I'm gonna put a pin in, stop it moving. I'll drill another one, I might put another pin in. Then I can drill the other four. So over to the drill press.
So again, I'm, I was trying to avoid breakout, so you get a nice clean hole at the back. Um, so you'll notice I was drilling almost all the way through and then I relaxed a bit and then carried on all the way through. Rather than just walloping it right through, because what it does is it pushes bits of wood out from the back and you'll get what we call breakout. So yeah, that came out not too bad. It's actually too bright there, isn't it? It's too much light. It's like whiting out. We'll work on the camera settings, eh? Apparently, some, uh, someone just said the pin advice that we have. The pin advice is priceless. Yeah, it's just a little trick that we do sometimes. I don't always do it. But I didn't want to fluff it today, did I? Be careful when you're removing the tape because that can lift out chunks of wood as well. And there we go. That is actually all the woodwork that I'm going to do today. Now I'm going to start gluing bits on. We'll tidy these bits up later. Notice that looks a bit rough there and there. Yeah, that's fine. Um, my patterns never actually line up there because people specify different nut widths. So I always leave my patterns um, over wide, extra wide on purpose. And then I'll just take this down by hand later. I'll do that when I'm carving the neck. Um, or I could just do it now and demonstrate how easy and quick it is to do with the actual machine. Uh, now I'll, I'll leave it, I'll do it when I normally do it. Um, I normally glue the fretboard on and then clean it up, you see, because if your fretboard glues on just slightly wonky, you've still got that little bit of room for error there, you see as well. So we won't do that yet. We're going to clean up around the headstock um, as part of the neck carving procedure, shaping the neck. So next I'm going to glue the truss rod in and then we're going to have a little chat. So EP e says it's fascinating to see something that looks a bit like a railway sleeper turn into something. Yeah, yeah that's very truck. true. Yeah, mention no names, but there was somebody who came on the course and when I handed them their piece of wood, they thought it was an old bit of scrap wood. <laughs> <laughs> Mentioning no names, but I know you were watching. <laughs> and it, it was a beautiful piece of rosewood. <laughs> but yeah, you're right, they look rough. They don't look much when you start out. So I'm going to have a little tidy up because when you, when you glue in again, um, dust is your enemy. We don't want to get a load of dust in our glue joint. So I'm going to have a very quick tidy. Sweep my bench down. So I'm gluing the fretboard, uh, the, the truss rod in. It goes in this way up, this one, flat side up. Um, if you're ever not sure, then what you can do is tighten the truss rod, just as if you're putting a screw in. So you tighten it up, tighten, tighten. See which way it bends. So you want it facing up. You want the bend facing up. This one will actually bend both ways if I undo it. So if I get it the wrong way around, it doesn't really matter. But it's best if you get it, tighten this as if it's a, as if you're putting a screw in, just tighten it normal, normal tighten. See which way it bends and it goes bend up. So I'm gonna make sure it's loose. I'm gonna put it in and then my fillet gets glued down on top. So let's just, uh, as far that way as it will go. Um, let's just have a little test fit. Looks good. Using tight bond because it dries fast. Um, I bet after about 10 minutes I can work on this. So I only want the glue on the side of the fillet. I don't want any glue touching the truss rod. So we say we're gluing the truss rod in but we're not actually. We're gluing the fillet in. And the fillet is really there. It's to stop the truss rod from rattling. A lot of factory guitars, what they do is they make the, the truss rod, the truss rod, they make the, um, the truss rod slot the exact depth for the truss rod. And then when the fretboard goes on, it clamps it. To do that kind of thing, you need to be super accurate. 
and they don't always work out. Any discrepancies and you end up with a, a truss rod that will rattle. So if there's any little gaps, the truss rod can rattle or even worse, it can resonate. That can be a nightmare for an instrument. To have a piece of metal resonating inside is a nightmare. So this will stop any rattles or truss rod resonance. So that's just clamped in on top of the truss rod. Got to make sure it's gone all the way in. And I'm going to clip it. You only really need one clip. One would be sufficient. That's all we used to use in the factory. Um, but I'll put more on just to be on the safe side. So as you can see, it sticks up. So the truss rod fillet sticks up above the neck. So when that's dry, I need to shave it off so that I can stick my fretboard down on top. So there we go. Time for a cup of tea, I think. What do you reckon? So um, we need to kill a bit of time. So uh, have we got any questions? Uh, you've got one. Uh, EP asked um, about if you taped the back of the headstock before drilling machine head holes, would that help avoid breaking, you know, breakout chips? You might need to say that again. If you put tape on the back of the headstock before you drill the holes, will it prevent breakout? No, it won't prevent breakout. It'll still break out if it's going to break out. Um, it's best to have the back of the headstock needs to be as flat as possible and there needs to be no gap underneath. So you notice when I was drilling, um, every now and again I stopped and I blew all the dust off. Um, any dust, if it's sitting on top of any dust or chips, um, then you, you've created a gap underneath and that's a space that the wood can be pushed out into. So masking tape isn't going to isn't really going to stop that. What it will do though is um, if you do get breakout, you could peel the tape off, put some glue on, and then put the tape back down. And then you've got your your chips would be glued back in exactly the same place. That's a little trick I use sometimes um, on the fretboard when I'm removing frets from a from a fretboard. Um, if it's a particularly bad one that wants to chip. You can put masking tape down each side and then when you pull the fret out it does its thing you can lift the tape put super glue on put the tape back down and all, everything goes back down exactly where it should be so that's awesome eh? little masking tape trick um, of course you might have more luck than me it, um, with, with all these little tricks what I would say is and try it on a piece of scrap first, see what happens. Of course, every piece of wood is different, so it might work good on one piece and not work so good on another piece, but try it on scrap first. Uh, any other questions? So, thank you, maybe you could, um, whilst we could take a little while to catch up and um, give a little round look of uh, the other guitars. No, I'm not going to go through all the, the other guitars. No, I'm not going to do that now. Sorry. Mm. Too much to do, folks. Unless there's any questions. If there's no questions, then I'll show you well, some. Here we go. Right. Uh, Ehab is asking the slot was straight. Strats are doing the truss rod the other way around. Is the slot for a strat curved, a kind of open U shape? In, what, in which case, why? Well, I can't really speak for every every strat. I'm sure there's lots and lots of different um, styles. I know traditionally it was, they used a compression style rod, um, which wasn't bent. And then I think they moved to a bent truss rod. Um, they've, I'm pretty sure they've done everything, every which way. Um, we used to, didn't we? Yeah, what was the question again? Is it, it's about strat. strat. Truss rods be they're the other way round. It's, it's, it's just about that, isn't it? What, why they that way round? So they yeah, I think what you also might be getting at is that um, struts uh, truss rods often go in from the back, so you get you're left with what we call a skunk stripe, 
Um, that's just a different method of construction. If you imagine you were making like Fender originally made one piece necks. So there's no fretboard. So you can't hide the truss rod under the fretboard. So it has to go in from the back. So um, the skunk stripe, the truss rod in from the back, that came from Fender's Fender style necks, um, which were one piece, one piece bolt on necks. So that's something we, we used to do, we did that in the past. Um, I don't do it so often now, I prefer to use a separate fretboard and I put the, the truss rod adjuster there as opposed to there. It makes the headstock a lot cleaner and stronger, a little bit stronger. So hopefully that, that answers your question, Yab. Um, Martin, Bur Martin Birch, hello Martin Birch. H how, uh, in Hi Martin. Uh, how often do necks need the truss rod to be adjusted? He hasn't looked at any of his ever. Yeah. How often do truss rods need adjusting? And Martin's saying that he's never looked at his truss rods, never adjusted it. <laughs> well, um, yeah, hopefully that's the case for most people, is that you never have to adjust the truss rod. Um, the truss rod should be set at the factory or in the shop we bought it from. When you put a set of strings on the neck is going to bend and then the truss rod is to bring the neck back straight again so it's something that you do when you set the guitar up for the first time or subsequently if you're a professional musician you probably have your guitar set up twice a year um, you have like a summer and a winter setup because you might notice a bit of movement um, also, if you're travelling the world, playing different venues all over the world, you might get your guitar set up a lot more often than that. So, um, really depends how much your guitar travels, I think. Um, if it's in the same place all the time, it, it probably, once it's settled, it probably won't ever move. It's changes in um, the environment, like if it moves to a you take it to a, a, a dry environment or a wet environment that's different from the one it's used to that's when it's going to change and it might need some kind of setup including an adjustment of the truss rod um, the other time you might need to adjust the truss rod is if you've changed your gauge of strings obviously fatter strings tuned to the same pitch will have more pull on the neck so you'll have to tighten the truss rod up a little bit, potentially. Um, you should never need more than a quarter turn on a truss rod. Half a turn is 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 quite a lot on a truss rod. That's after it's gone tight. Um, if you find that if you are trying to adjust a truss rod and you find that it's very tight, there's probably something wrong. It might be it needs a drop of oil to um, to actually loosen it off. You could put a drop of oil, slacken it off, and tighten it up again. And try again. Um, you'd be surprised how many truss rods just don't work though, especially older acoustic guitars and that kind of thing. They just don't work. Um, if you do get a truss rod that doesn't seem to be working very well, one thing you can do is give it a bit of help. So you can actually physically bend the neck as you tighten the truss rod and believe it or not, will will help it move. Um, aside from that, you really um, if you're not sure about it, you should really take it to um, a guitar shop or a guitar repairer or maker. Somebody who knows what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Jim McMillan said, My brother offered to set up my Epiphone Casino over 20 years ago. It ended up with a net like a dog's hind leg. Never touched a tr tr truss rod since. <laughs> so that, that, let that be a lesson to us all. Um, Roger Appleby is asking, Do you, um, put re do you have relief? in your um do you put relief in your necks or are they dead straight um good question the strings when you put the strings on that will pull a little bit of relief in so i usually aim for a tiny bit of relief to be honest so i would get my fretboard as flat as i can get it um and then 
continue until I've just got a little bit of relief. I'm going to show you on Saturday exactly how I do that. So tune in. Um, yeah, a little bit of relief is good, but not too much. We're talking about um, ten thousandths of an inch, something like that. Like um, the thickness of your thinnest string is about how much relief, roughly, is a good idea to have. And um, perfectly straight is okay. I'm told that some well-known makers <laughs> probably shouldn't mention. Um, make their necks as perfectly straight as possible. Perfectly straight, they say. And if it is perfectly straight, that's fine. But if there's the slightest hint of back bow or a hump, then you're going to get a buzz, potentially a rattle. So if there's a hump here, when you play here, you're going to get a rattle. Um, so it's best to have just very, very gentle relief all over and actually a little bit fall away at the end. But I'll go over that on Saturday in a bit more detail. Okay, so tune in. Um, subscribe to the channel, folks, so that you don't miss it. I think it's going to be 1 p.m., but I'm not entirely sure. We might have to start a little bit earlier. I'll have to work it out in my head if I can do it in time. All right. Uh, Matthew Johnson is saying, I'm making my own bass and I don't have any tools yet. I'm concerned with doing a scarf joint for the headstock. When making the neck for a beginner, how thick would you choose the neck blank to be? Well, for a scarf neck, I make my neck blanks 20 mil thick. And then the, 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 um, the angle comes from um, the, the scarf joint. I've actually got a scarf neck blank here. So that's 20 mil thick. And then um, I've, I've put the joint there, look. A lot of people put the joint here under the fretboard because they think the fretboard will make it stronger. But you probably have seen yourself a load of like those kind of rock, rocky style guitars where the fretboard's coming away. The fretboard comes away at this end because effectively you're gluing it onto end grain. So I prefer to put the joint here. As you can see, you do a pretty good job. It becomes pretty much invisible, the joint. You can see it on the edge there. But when this is cut out, you'll barely notice that there's a joint there at all. So that's a scarf headstock. Maybe um, at some point soon I'll do a special on how we do that, because I could do that in a live stream, how we do, um, how we make a scarf neck. Um, see, from this point onwards, it's pretty much the same as a, as a normal neck, once you've got that. The only thing is it's a bit difficult to clamp and hold because of the shape. But where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I do this with a router. I've got a special trick to it. I, I've got time to go into that now, I'm sorry, but um, what I can say is, go for it. Bill from Tone Tech's online. Hi Bill from Tone Tech. Yeah, get all your parts and stuff from Tone Tech. I'm not affiliated in any way, but um, we do get a lot of stuff from there and well, he's, he's brilliant. He's focusing on, he's, going, he's a tool specialist now really, isn't he? More than parts and yeah yeah all top quality stuff uh, Boomian Universe is saying yes scarf joint lesson please yes scarf joint lesson okay vote for scarf joint lesson noted I've got to get this one finished first though so not this weekend um, yeah we'll have to um, maybe we'll have a vote what about what I'm going to do next someone's already um, at, it was Chris actually the call, asked you ages ago about uh, in the Hi Chris, your fretboard's on the way by the way. Um, Sorry for the delay. He was asking about the body, I think, or the body shape. Is that a body shape, we're going to have a vote on that. Um, I won't be cutting the body out until um, Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning, depending on how it goes. Um, I don't know what shape it's going to be yet, that's going to be you guys going to choose. <laughs> Okay, can we go back to scarf joints? Back to scarf joints, yeah, another e scarf joint question. EP saying, so am I right in saying scarf joints are just to save money because you can use a much thinner neck blank? That is one advantage of a scarf neck, yes. You can use a thinner neck blank, so you save money for sure. Um, 
that's one advantage the other advantage is you get to optimize the headstock angle with this kind of guitar so this is the now actually I make these 21 mil thick just a little bit thicker okay so your only headstock angle is created by making this dip in the headstock so it's a parallel headstock I call this a parallel headstock um, so you haven't really got enough angle for the string you'll maybe have come across guitars where the strings are bouncing in the slot they need to have a string tree what we call a string tree or a string retainer it holds the string down into the nut um, increasing the break angle over the nut so that you get a good sound out of your string so you haven't got enough break angle the string can bounce in the, in the nut and make a, like a sitari sound you might have come across that as I was saying um, so that is the disadvantage of a bolt-on neck you need to have these string trees that hold the strings down um, now those are extra points of friction so when you're tuning there's potentially the string will bind on those um, so they're not ideal especially if you've got a trem you know and you're going mad with your tremolo they, they could bind on those um, causing tuning problems with a scarf neck you've optimized the headstock angle just like just like with the, um, the set neck in fact it's this 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 angle is even fiercer than the set neck 14 degrees is absolute maximum I would say um, for, a, for a headstock angle so you can kind of max out the more angle you've got the harder the strings press into the nut and so you should get more sustain and more sound out of the string if you see what I mean um, but you can go too far and then you end up with a binding problem again um, where the string will bind in the nut so I would say um, as I said earlier between 9 and 12 degrees for me is optimum that's what I go for with these although I don't get too hung up on the actual number of degrees um, what's important to me is does the string hold down in the nut correctly and does it bind so 9 to 12 degrees is optimum um, again all the patterns for this are on the course they're available I'll show you how to make all the jigs that I've used today. Um, there's a section on that um, first part of the course. After you've done your drawings, then you know which patterns you need to make. You make your patterns, then you can make your guitar. In fact, you can make as many guitars as you like. You don't have to stick at just one. Another question? Last question then, and then I'm going to carry on with my... Right, two quick questions then. One is Ro Roel Shelton... Mark, what do you think of those hot rod wheel adjust truss rods? Um, I don't use them myself because um, I like I like to hide things as much as possible, so I like to tuck things away. So I, d I don't use them myself, but I'm sure they're absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with them at all. It's just my preference is to use more slimline stuff. Um, I don't know if you were here earlier, I'll just show you my fret, my truss right here. Where have they gone? Oh, so just in case you missed it earlier, this is the truss rods we use. This is a two-way one, but we, um, we do a one-way one as well. You don't really need a two-way. One way is perfectly acceptable. Um, but you, can you see how slimline it is? Um, it fits into a quarter inch. It's only nine mil high. Advantage of that is I can carve my necks as thin as I like. Um, check the dimensions of your truss rod before you order it. This is six mil by nine mil. It's really small, super powerful, excellent truss rod design, two way adjustable. What more could you want? They do a one way one which is a little bit cheaper. Um, that's my truss rod of choice um, because it's, it's just so small and neat. Hopefully that answers your question. I'm sure it's a perfectly good truss rod. 
I reckon it will take up a lot more space than that. Um, which means that there might be some people, they ask me for a thin neck, that you might not be able to do with that truss rod because it takes up too much space. You would end up carving into your truss rod, which is uh, not ideal. Right, so can you, will you talk about nut options in another stream? Nut options. Well, someone's asking about bone or tusk, and I think we can talk about nuts another time. Nut options. Yeah, I'll probably maybe talk about that kind of thing on the last day, which would be the setup day on the Sunday. Yeah. But just just briefly, um, I I'll use it either whatever people ask me for. If somebody wants a bone nut, they'll certainly get a bone nut. But my standard nuts are tusk, which is Crafting. with a Q. <laughs> it's it's not real tusk. It's synthetic ivory. Um, sounds fantastic, and it's consistent. The thing with bone is, it's not necessarily consistent. Nasty. You see, what, um, like wood, you get good bits and bad bits. Um, you can't just use any old bone. It has to be properly cleaned, and bleached. Um, otherwise, it will leach fat and stuff into your guitar it and stinks. ruin your finish. The other thing is working with bone. As Carol's pointing out, it stinks. It's horrible. I hate it. It's like uh, it's like burn, burning hair. Yeah. Vile. Vile, vile. So, if somebody specifies a bone nut, I will certainly do it, but um, I would prefer not to because it stinks. And you're not allowed home at night. <laughs> yeah, okay. and, and it is inconsistent. Um, I like the tusk nuts and just about every other guitar maker out there that I've seen is using the Tusk Nuts as well. So if it's good enough for Taylor and Martin, it's good enough for us. Right, one last question, because this relates to, to what you were talking about before about joints. So uh, Arno says, thoughts about volutes? Would that slightly compensate for weakness at the headstock angle on a, non, on a non-scarf joint? Debatable. Someone's asking about a volute. Now I've left a chunk of wood on there so I can carve a volute. If you're not sure what a volute is, it's like a curve at the back here. Let's see if Carol can um, put her hands on a volute for us. Um, a little volute. Yeah, here's a volute. So there's a volute on the back of the headstock. There's one style of volute. That's the style I prefer. It's like a nice roundy shape. It's only rough carved, so it's a bit rough. But there's a bigger one. Um, just maybe this one. So this is my first acoustic guitar actually with a volute, an enormous volute. Look at that. That's too big. <laughs> it was my first one. Um, some players don't like volutes because um, they say it gets in the way of your hand. Personally, I like them because it stops my hand. You know, it just feels comfortable. I can just untangle my guitar. It feels comfortable to me to stop my hand in the right place. So that is oversized though. The one on my guitar is, is oversized. Um, and there are different shapes of lutes. Now, does it make the headstock stronger? That's debatable. I think so, but a lot of people don't. So I've never tested it. Uh, so I've not done an AB test. I think it has to make it a little bit stronger, doesn't it? Because that's the weak point where the, the truss rod slot will be and all that kind of stuff. It's got to make it a little bit stronger, surely. But it is debatable. Not everybody agrees. So. Um, Maybe you could be the one that finds out for sure. Do a test. Make two and we'll jump up and down on them. <laughs> Thomas uh, Slowinkwitz is asking about what about a real amber nut? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Knock yourself out. That'd be expensive. <laughs> expensive. Yeah. Please don't Jurassic. ask me to do it then. Please. <laughs> right. Right. Onwards. Let's do it. Yeah. We're going to wrap it up, folks. You're coming up to two hours. I am coming up to two hours. I said it'd be two hours, so let's get this fretboard glued on. Carol's kept me talking too long. Oh. Okay.
put it in this vise just for a bit of convenience. What I need to do is trim this fillet down so that I can glue my fretboard on. So we're nearly there. Nearly there, folks. Yeah, dying for a cup of tea. Aren't we? Let's just clamp it in there. Um, one of the questions I've had recently on my YouTube channel, a couple of times actually, was um, do you need a plane? So actually no you don't. You can do this without a plane. I'll show you how. But there are some times where a plane will come in handy. This is the cheapest plane money can buy. Um, I wouldn't like to say how much they are now but mine cost about £10. Inexpensive. Put it on an angle like this, not straight, because it's just going to go thunk. But if you put it on an angle, it slices. I'm going to be really careful. The worst thing I can do here is damage the edges. I want to keep the edges nice and crisp and clean. So we can use a plane if we've got one. If we haven't got one, just use a sanding block. Um, stick some sandpaper onto a block and you can use that. Obviously it's going to take a bit longer. Here's another trick. That is a, um, a blade. Um, yeah, another comment I had on my YouTube channel was um, a bit snidey about um, huh, giving young people blades. That's a good idea. Sarcasm. <laughs> that was good, wasn't it, Carol? That's my impression of a YouTube commenter. <laughs> Thing is, though, if you can't handle a blade, you probably shouldn't be attempting to build a guitar. Is what I'm saying. So this is like a um, called them Stanley blades, like about the cheapest tool you can buy, probably. But it's amazing what you can do with one of these things. I'm going to put look where my fingers are. Two fingers. And then at the back I've got two thumbs, fingers and thumbs. This is the two-handed technique. There's a one-handed technique as well. I'll go over all this on the course. Um, you can use this as well. It works like a miniature plane. One thing about planing or scraping is if it doesn't work very well, try going the other way. But look at that, a razor blade. Look at those shavings, they're just like planar shavings. Look, amazing, eh? So, scrape, plane, and sand. Removing that excess fillet. I'll get as close as I can without gouging up the wood underneath. And then I'm going to finish with the scraper blade. Obviously this surface needs to be perfectly flat and ready for gluing the fretboard on. When I say perfectly flat, there's actually no such thing. So what I mean is, no lumps. So we can't do anything about a low spot, but we can take the high spots off. So here, look, I'm using the blade as a straight edge. There, it's straight. Here, it pivots. So 
see, I can feel that. When we get the neural link sorted, you'll be able to feel it too. But until then, you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm testing it to see where that fillet is still high and the blade rocks. So I can just simply scrape a bit more. Retest. Maybe a tiny bit still. There's good. There's good. 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 A tiny bit at each end. Just there. And just there. I want to make sure I've scraped the whole surface. Because previously, this piece of wood went through the sander and it was sanded flat. So when you sand a piece of wood, it gets dust um, and it roughs up the fibres uh, and the glue doesn't stick as well. So if you scrape the surface, it opens up those fibres, it leaves a nice clean crisp surface. You get a much stronger gluing surface, a much stronger glue joint. So there, that's now flat. It's ready for gluing. We're going to do the same thing with the fretboard. I'm just going to give it a quick scrape using the one-handed technique this time. So I'm holding it with my thumb in the middle and the finger each side. I bend it slightly. We get much better shots of this on the course, folks. So on the course, we've got four cameras going, catching it from all the angles. Brilliant. We're getting there. I'm going to cut the fretboard to length now. Because um, we're ready to glue it on. So when we're gluing, I, I would never go straight for the glue and just... Um, Whack a load of glue on and hope for the best. We always do a dry run first. So that's what you'll see me do. A dry run. And then we'll go for the, uh, for the glue. First I'm going to chop the ends off my fretboard. Coming up. Right, if you saw sticks, put a bit of wax on it. I'm going to put a bit of wax on that because I'm um, finding it a bit difficult. Just ordinary um, beeswax, just don't cut your fingers. A little bit of wax and it suddenly becomes a lot easier. Same this end. Is it rocking? Sorry. Nearly there. Got it. I hope all your houses weren't rocking then. <laughs> yeah, it's probably better to count the frets before you cut the ends off. Double check before you cut the ends off. But that's my 22 fret fretboard. So, I need to glue it onto here. Again, because we're gluing, I'm going to tidy up a bit. Because I'm gluing, I'm going to tidy my bench. We don't want dust in our glue joint. So let's just make a little bit of space.
get rid of the dust and we're ready to go right now because we used our template to make both pieces we have not we don't have a lot of room for error if I glue my fretboard on wonky then we're going to end up with a at best a narrower neck than intended at worst um, we'll have to take the fretboard off and start again so we need to make sure this doesn't move when we're gluing if you ever if you've ever done any gluing before you'll know that everything behaves perfectly well whilst you're um, dry clamping but as soon as you put glue on everything slides around all over the place so to prevent that we're going to use the nail trick as noted in the comments section so here's the nail trick um, we're going to use a couple of nails as pins to stop the fretboard moving and we're going to use them underneath where the frets are going to be so in the end the fret will hide the hole where the pin was so the pin is there just temporarily it's just a temporary pin um, just to stop the fretboard sliding around while we glue it we take the pins out um, as soon as the glue is dry so this here is called a fretboard call it's the same shape as the fretboard and it's got some holes drilled out strategically for where I'm going to put the pins so I just chose the first fret and well we'll use this one and this one because they line up with two frets so let's just mark through where they are there and there again I show you how to make these things on the course it's called a call so any block that is shaped and used for clamping is called a call which is spelt C-A-U-L so this is our fretboard call and as you can see it's got a couple of strips glued on it that's just to accommodate because the fretboard's curved already you see if you tuned in uh, um, on last Wednesday you would have seen me making the fretboard and how we put the curve on there so this is this has got two sticks on it to accommodate that curve there okay so I've marked my two holes one there and one there I'm gonna drill them I'm using a 1.5 mil drill. And I've got some pins which just happen to fit. These are the pins that Chris was asking about last week. Yeah, someone was asking about these last week. So here's my pins. These are, um, I just bought a bag full of cheap panel pins. And then I found a drill that fitted. Um, it doesn't have to be a perfect fit, just uh, sometimes get a bit of burr from the drill I'll scrape that off so I'm going to tap the pins through just until, until it just pokes through there just poking through Do the other one. You feel it just hit the bench, you see. So I've got I've got scrap wood on my benches, so it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't matter if I damage my bench. I'm going to line this up. You see, I've got I've got my nut mark there. So I can line that up, you see. And I'm going to give the nails a tap. 
let's put a bit of scrap under it give the nails a tap I don't want to whack it all the way in just a little bit just to hold it there solid that will stop it sliding around while we put the glue on but first we're going to do a dry clamp so the coil goes on top so the reason we dry clamp is well there's a couple of reasons um, it means that I'll get all my clamps together in one place so I haven't got to go running around looking for clamps while my glue's drying and also when the clamps are on I can um, I can do a visual check and I can check to see what it looks like um, and make any alterations if uh, if we put the glue on and then go for clamping and something doesn't look right then you scupper don't you so there's two good reasons for doing a test the mistake a lot of people make with these clamps is they, they put them on like this don't do that here's what to do right you put the clamp in place and you press it from the back hold it like that flat against the surface and then and then wind it down it winds down straight because if you if you just do this then tighten it up then it, it might just twist so it's better to push it flat and then tighten I'm not going to over tighten they just need to be firm we don't want to crush any wood and I've got a bigger clamp for on the end here and that my friends is how we glue the fretboard on let's have a check does it look good I think so. looks pretty good to me Carol says it's okay so pass so that's why we dry clamp so that we can have a visual check for gaps and now all my clamps are in the right place I haven't got to run around looking for different size clamps I'm going to take them all off make a pile and I'm going to glue it so folks this is your last chance to ask any questions while I'm um, while I'm gluing this on uh, see if you've got any more questions because uh, we're winding up after this we're gonna we're gonna finish pretty soon after this <sighs> make sure there's no dust about I can just move that to one side like that and then I'm ready to apply my glue so um, I'm gonna just use my finger this time I can make a fancy spreader but you know I quite like my finger my fingers quite good for spreading glue you want about this much always better to put slightly too much than slightly too little you don't want to starve your um, your glue joint you want a nice thin yellow film I'm using tight bond but you could just use any old wood glue for this it doesn't have to be tight bond I use tight bond because it's very strong and um, it, it's very fast grab um, and it sticks it, it, it glues faster than white glue faster and stronger so there's a couple of bits here where my fingers sticking my fingers not sliding um, so I probably need to add a bit more glue it's a bit dry there so let's just put a little bit more glue on so your finger starts to feel it starts to stick if it's not wet enough a little bit more glue there see my finger sliding now that's when you know you've got enough on always better like I say if you put a little bit too much on it will just squeeze out but if you don't put enough on it won't be strong enough so we don't want to hang about too long we want to get them together 
as quick as possible. What I'm going to do is drop it down really gently and then I'm going to slide it up and down until it falls into those holes that we made. There we go. So now we know it's in exactly the same place. Another tap. Clamps on. We can clean up the excess glue with a damp rag. Doesn't matter what type of clamps you've got, any type of clamps will do. You don't need masses of clamping pressure. I've even done this with just these plastic clips. I've glued fretboards on before with just these plastic clips. Massive clamping pressure is not called for. That's it. Spread them out evenly. Okay, right, I'm going to leave that now until Saturday. So the bit of glue squeeze out, lovely look at that. Um, so that's it folks. We're done. Carol. We're done, folks. I promised you something that resembled a neck. And uh, I think that pretty much resembles a neck. When we take the clamps off, the next job is to carve the neck dots and frets. So Saturday, this will be not resembling a neck, but this will be a finished neck on Saturday. So I'll be carving dotting and fretting. Um, tune in and you can have your input on what type of dots I use and other stuff that I think of. Body ideas, I've got some already. Yeah, we'll, um, we'll maybe give you some options on wood choice for the body and body shapes as well. Like so the... you guys are going to choose the shape of the body, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I might have to reserve fi final judgment, guys. We've got flying bees and pointy things already. <laughs> yeah, those are... Uh, not always um, uh, an easy choice to make because they don't fit onto a normal body blank. You have to cut bits off and join them on other bits to get the piece of wood big enough. But yeah, why not? Uh, Any shape you want, guys. Martin Birch is saying, wipe your excess glue. Yeah, I'll get to that. Right, we've got, some, we've got a couple of questions. Um, EP asked, have you ever accidentally cut off your fretboard in the wrong place? Um, only on national television. Have you ever? <laughs> <Yes>. um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I've got a pile, so uh, okay, um, it can wait until somebody wants a 21 fret vintage, or um, acoustics are 20 frets anyway. So, um, yeah, I think pretty much you th you think of any mistake that you could possibly make, I've done it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm writing a book about I've that. I've been there. Been um, there. Done it. Right, can you say, uh, Bruce Scarborough has just tuned in and he said he can't believe that he's found this channel because he's just about to start on his neck. Bruce, well done. You found um, us. Um, and he, he's asking about um, the, the community. So I think it's worth telling people just yeah, so about the guitar making and the difference between this channel and our website. Okay, yeah. Right, I only set up my YouTube channel to promote my website. So, um, guitarmaking.co.uk. Um, the thing is, YouTube could close down at any time, or they could say, oh, we don't want any people using tools on YouTube, or, or they could say anything they want. So YouTube could just turn around one day and just, there might not be any guitar making on YouTube one day. So, um, 
I set up my own platform. It took four years, well, four years ago I started it, um, guitarmaking.co.uk. Uh, there's, oh, I've got to say, well over 400 guitar making videos. But the difference is it's all laid out step by step in the right order. So you haven't got to go around searching for it. You can follow it through step by step. You can dip in and out. You know, if you're quite happy with your build and you're just stuck in one place. Um, a lot of people have done that and it's got them out of a hole. Um, but the idea is, yeah, start with a basic blank piece of paper. Do your drawing, make your patterns, build your guitar. And I take you through every stage of the process. I've forgotten the question. No, I was just... It was Bruce was he's saying that he, he's, he stumbled across this and he's about to start his first build. So. Yeah, so well done for finding us, Bruce. Head over to the guitar making um, site and you'll see that there's a we've got a forum. So that's what you're asking about the, the community. So there's a basically all us lot, all these guys in the comments and more <laughs> uh, and pictures and amazing. Yeah, we've amazing. got a forum. So if anybody gets stuck, and um, we all help each other out and. Um, we put pictures of, of, our, of our, what we're working on, our builds and that. So have, have a look. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? Come and say hello. Yeah. And we'll say hello back. Um, and, and you can support us. You can become a supporter. Or if you want to get on the courses, then you have to become a premium member. So that's how that works. Obviously, I've got to make a living somehow. And um, YouTube happens. isn't going to do it. But the reason I set up the YouTube channel like I was saying earlier, I was purely just to promote um, the my guitar making website. So you'll find that most of the, until recently, most of the videos on the channel have been either promo videos or preview videos from my courses. So recently that's changed because I've decided to do more live streaming. Um, uh, current events obviously gave us a kick up the arse to do it, but we always wanted to do it do it anyway so I'm working on building up the system what I'm looking at is trying to get a, a close-up cam so we can get more close-up action so um, yeah we need all the support you can get all of our gigs have been cancelled all our workshop courses are cancelled <laughs> for the foreseeable so um, so here I am busking for a living this is this is the new normal folks and the point about the paper so there's a free community which anybody which is yeah. wonderful but then the courses are not they're not time there it's a collection of you, once you sign up you have access to all the videos until you decide not to sign up anymore isn't it? it's like yeah so it's a monthly subscription on the website you pay f um you pay for a month you can watch as many videos as you want all of them so that's it folks no it's not i'm so, done no, we need to, you need to, um, you've had a question, have you ever used a dig bow? Just there's a couple of questions about wood, which I want you to mention. So, um, uh, sorry, somebody has asked about our dig bow. I dig bow, yes, I've used I dig bow. It's similar to mahogany in tone and texture. So it's nice wood to work with, I dig bow. Um, it's kind of like light greeny colour, isn't it? Um, but it feels like... Um, Actually, very, very similar to Karina, mm. isn't it? It's virtually identical to Karina. So yeah, go for it. I dig bows are good. And we've had a guy on from RMPH channel. Um, and RMPH channel. Yeah. And Welcome. He's, he's been using Russian pine. He looks like he's using local, more yeah. local woods. Yeah. He's used Why Russian not? pine yeah. for his body. Yeah, brilliant. Um, pine, he's, pine's good for bodies. Why not? And he's made a neck. Um, he made a neck like with looks rustic beach and acacia yeah and he said it's not moved it's been yeah why not so yeah really beach is good not sure about acacia because under these i can't recall woods, using acacia local before. woods are interesting and tony but I might in have. Um, australia but yeah if in doubt do a test try it and that's obviously what you did and it's worked so great for bodies for electrics pines okay and tony in yeah australia, i've made bodies from electrics with pine i wouldn't make necks from pine it's not strong enough but bodies from pine look pretty cool in fact if you look at an acoustic guitar the top is really pine it's posh pine really um sitka spruce Whoa. um and tony in australia has used bunya pine bunya bunya brilliant for his body great okay 
And lastly, uh, lastly, well, that's well, good to know. Bunya Pine, that works. Um, well, well, Tony, Bunya Pine, go to the forum, put a picture up of Bunya yeah, Pine, and I'm so we all know what it looks like. Yeah, and our MPH, um, give us a picture. Head to the forum, yeah. make a post, and on, put put a picture. On here. Time making. Right. That's where to go. Lastly, um, uh, Raoul in New Zealand says it's two twenty-five in the morning. It's two twenty-five. in the morning. Yeah, a.m. So he's. Been... We'll go to bed. <laughs> no, you. there's no time like the present. <laughs> Get your bits of wood out now. Get your tools out now. It's two twenty-five in the morning. Um, you can do your drawing. <laughs> right, so um, we're going to say 1pm. I'm going to say 1pm. Subject to change. I might change it to 11 if I think that we're going to run out of time. Um, you won't be up at 11. Yeah, no, I won't be up at 11. So 1 o'clock Saturday then. <laughs> 1 o'clock Saturday. Be there or miss out. Here's our neck. I did clean off a bit of excess glue there. I'm not too fussy about it because I'm going to carve it all off anyway. Um, so on Saturday, dots, frets, carving the neck, and I might, well, fingers crossed, I might get started on the body because I'm supposed to be finishing this guitar on Sunday, so it's turned into a bit of a speed build. Anyway, I think we're done. Guitarmaking.co.uk, head over to the site, hit the forum, Say hello, I'll be there, so you can come and say hello to me. Um, Carol's going to play us a little film for the outro. The so, sound this time. Um, yeah, hopefully the sound will work this time. So, um, thanks for watching, folks. I can't tell you what it means to me um, that you tune in and watch us. Uh, otherwise, I'd be just just be me and Carol, wouldn't it? Like the rest of the week. We're going insane. <laughs> um, yeah, and all your support. Um, I'm gobsmacked by all the amazing comments and um, uh, support from you guys that we've been getting. Loads of shares on Facebook, um, likes, um, subscribe accounts going up way fast. It's all very exciting. <laughs> YouTube's going ballistic. So um, yeah, fingers crossed that continues. Um, see you on Saturday and again on Sunday. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Remember, measure twice, cut once. Like no